Hi, this is Rob Hawley from the Fremont Peak Observatory. Welcome to the next section of photographing a solar eclipse. In this section we'll talk about equipment and what you should bring. In the last section we talked about KISS, Keep It Simple Stupid, and how important that is to successful eclipse photography. In this section we'll talk about how to achieve that. Remember, unless you live in Casper, Wyoming, your equipment needs to be portable and easily set up at the site with likely with no power. The first and easiest alternative is wide angle. I use a GoPro set to movie mode. Make sure you set the highest resolution. You can also use your phone either in movie mode or in picture mode. Lastly in 2008 I used a DSLR with an extremely wide angle lens. The advantage of that approach is you get very high quality images which you can then string together with your favorite movie program. Your first and most important choice is what optics you use. I prefer a TV76 and a DSLR. I've used this combination in Libya, Easter Island, and most recently in Svalbard. This combination produces by far the best images and can be finely focused. I've used a Canon 300mm telephoto when I've been on a ship, but my experience is that telephotos don't focus properly. Remember that you're going to have to manually focus whatever you use. I either choose a sunspot or the moon's edge. And turn off autofocus if you end up using a uh, telephoto. I do not recommend using a zoom. I used a zoom in 2012 and was very disappointed with the results. Of course the transportation problems for you this year may be much less than what I've had to face in the past. Some of you may end up bringing your big Takahashi scopes and get probably get some really good pictures. Since this eclipse is in the U.S., I'm sure some of you are thinking about bringing your SCTs. Well, here's something to consider. The images shown here are simulations of what the field of view is for various focal lengths. And it's from Fred Espinak's website. Remember, when you image the moon, you're only looking at a small portion of what's going to be seen during an eclipse. If you want to capture the corona, you'll need a much wider field of view. Take a look at these images and decide for yourself what your goal is. On the other hand, your SCT may do a marvelous job in capturing the phenomena around the surface of the eclipse sun. Here are two non-simulated examples of frame size. In the first case, I'm showing you a full frame from my TV76. And here is from a 300 millimeter telephoto. In my first eclipses I tried using a fixed mount, but that proved to be a problem. Since 2006 I've always used an equatorial mount when I've been on land. The mount that I've used for several eclipses is an Orion EQ3. This is a light mount and very transportable, but perfectly adequate for the relatively short exposures you'll be doing. However, I used an AstroTrack in Svalbard due to the weight limits. If you don't take this advice and use a fixed tripod, then at least use a geared head. Otherwise, you can end up chasing the sun, as I did. One additional piece of equipment that you should consider putting on your telescope is a device called a soul searcher. This will allow you to see whether your camera is pointing towards the sun or not. It saved me a couple times. For the magnified images, I've always used a DSLR. Originally a Canon 20DA and now a Canon 60DA. These are special cameras that have a different H-alpha filter in them. Other friends use other DSLRs, and a modified camera of another brand will probably work just as well. Alright, let's say you've decided on a DSLR. Now how do you trigger it? One thing you don't want to do is to try to trigger it manually. Been there, done that. You'll spend your time during the eclipse futzing with the camera. One alternative I suggest instead is to use an automated release. I've done this on several occasions. Set your DSLR to manually bracket. I use plus or minus three f-stops. With that setting, you will have the ability to capture a wide variety of the eclipse, especially if you're on a tracking mount. I use a Canon TC80N3 and found over the years that that's both reliable and simple. Here's an example of some images I've captured using this system, in this case from Svalbard in 2015. The fast exposure is good for capturing Bailey's beads on the chromosphere and some prominences. The middle one will capture middle corona, and the slowest one will allow you to capture some of the outer corona. 
Note that you need a tracking mount to do an exposure that slow. The most sophisticated approach is to combine using a tracking mount with scripting exposures on a computer. In Libya in 06, I used Images Plus and scripted a series of exposures that covered the full range of phenomenon. In 2017, I intend to use Solar Eclipse Maestro. This program is very sophisticated, runs on a Mac, and will completely control your camera based on when the eclipse occurs at your particular location. This is a screenshot from Solar Eclipse Maestro running on Mac OS El Capitan. Notice all the audio alerts and the program exposures. A warning though, the Canon cameras are not compatible with Mac OS Sierra. If you upgrade to Mac OS Sierra like I did, you're going to have to go back to El Capitan. Regardless of what optics you choose, you will need a solar filter. I've used both glass and film filters from Orion and Kendrick, and I think they're pretty much the same. Just be sure, especially with a film filter, that you check it by holding it up against the sun to make sure there are no holes in it. For your eyes, Rainbow Symphony is the go-to place. Be sure to order early because they're likely going to be busy next spring. Among the group I travel with, I'm frequently joked of being Pirate Rob. That's because I use an eye patch before totality. I do this for a couple of reasons. One is if you glance at the sun before C2, then you're going to see a big spot that's going to stay with you for the next couple minutes. And if your eclipse is only two minutes long, well, you're kind of out of luck. So that prevents that from happening. But in addition, it also dark adapts an eye. With the eye dark adapted, I find that I can see much more detail in the corona. And again, your principal goal here should be to look at the eclipse, not to photograph it. So to sum up this section, there are three things that are most important. First, choose a set of optics that are going to match your photographic goals. Second, use an equatorial mount so you don't chase the sun. And third, figure out a way of doing automation that works for you. Don't try to manually operate your camera.